operation is illegal. We get to take out a very bad man and be set for life. Ooh. It wasn't just Lorea's money in that house. It's too late to walk away. Ooh, the money! Triple Frontier. I was taking a shower and I heard a loud bang. Jake and a guy from a local motorcycle gang kicked in the door to my house, basically saying they were going to kill my wife and kids. I only had two options. I could either kill him and bury him out in the desert, which chances are I'd be a suspect and I'd get caught. Or I could work for the DEA and bury him under a prison. You know, these are people that they were friends of mine. We were almost like family. We were watching the distribution cell drop off money. I was too close to him. And all of a sudden, he gets nervous. He takes the bag. He throws it over a wood fence, and he runs. There's $2 million in that bag. Nobody was with me. You could take that money and walk away with it. You had this fine line between good and bad. You cannot go back to your normal life after tonight. it's so second nature to you because you become one of them i couldn't think like a cop i couldn't act like a cop i was a bad guy my name is jerry spezial i'm retired from the new york drug enforcement task force where 12 of those years i worked as a deep undercover in the cali drug cartel i was the person that transported the drugs for a fee if I wanted a new car, I wanted a plane, whatever I wanted, the trafficker was directing the funds. So think about it. I was able to use all the money I wanted to just go around the world and take down the cartel with their own money. But when you finally came back home to your family on an $80,000 salary, you were no longer that person. So does that become difficult for you? Yes, it does. It was Christmas. My wife was pregnant. We had a five-year-old daughter. There was no money. There was no options. I met Jake while we were both in class together, and we just liked to drink, party, have a good time. And I knew that he illegally dealt drugs. And the next thing I know, I was making $35,000 in a weekend. I managed to go eight months before I got arrested. My name is Chris Hefner, and I was a drug mule, and I became a DEA informant from 2002 to 2006. I became an informant because it was the only way I could protect my family. Jake had continued to deal drugs. They'd continued to build this massive organization. Well, I went to him out of loyalty and said, hey, man, you know, the DEA questioned me today. I'm on probation. I can go to jail for revealing this to you. He didn't listen to me. He repaid me with uh, paranoia, accusing me of starting this investigation and basically saying they were going to kill my wife and kids. Afraid. Jake had held my son. The day he was born. He was there. He brought us gifts. That, that's, a, that's a pretty important bond. When I became an informant, knowing that I was going to put individuals that I personally loved, sending them away to jail for 10, 20, 30 years, that, that pain was unbelievable. But when you make a choice of someone you like versus your family, the choice is going to be the same every time. What you have to understand is you're human and you start to like them. I became the godfather against the rules of the NYPD for their children. Went to parties, went on vacations. They became your friends. And that's what those ethical dilemmas are that became so hard to deal with to where it really damages you. I always knew I didn't have a safety net. It's like law enforcement. When they do their job and they're an undercover, they go back to their pension. They go back to their health insurance. They go back to their family and the respect they had in the community. I had nothing to go back to. So the first chance that I would have gotten to steal money as an informant, I would have done it without a shadow of a doubt. You're seeing so much cash. Does everybody look at it and say, wow, what I could do with that $5 million? Of course. Did cops steal? Yes, they did. And then they went to jail and they destroyed their families. And so it was staying within the four corners of the law, and that's what this is all about, and walking that tightrope without stepping off to the other side. People don't know how to read me. Was he a good guy? Was he a bad guy? They don't understand that everyone's out for themselves and everyone's trying to get money and everyone's trying to 
to protect their livelihood. And there's basically no rules. People want to say there are rules, but there, there are no rules.